Hello, I'm Chef Ian Bromstead, and welcome to Regal Fair, where I'll show you how to create simple and elegant meals, just like we do at some of the finest restaurants in this country. Today we're going to make a zucchini and ricotta tartine, then we'll make a little spaghetti al pomodoro, and then we'll finish with a shabby shoe cheese with a red wine syrup and shaved fennel. So I'm going to go ahead and actually start our red wine syrup right now. So I'm going to take about a cup and a half of red wine. Uh, I like a nice dry red wine. This is a Pinot Noir. So I'm going to take about a cup and a half of the red wine and about a tablespoon of honey. And I'm just going to let this reduce nice and slowly, just over low heat, just until it becomes nice and thick and syrupy. So we can go ahead and start on our tartine now. So I'm going to take about a cup of ricotta cheese. I'm going to just add it to this bowl here. And I'm going to take about, uh, let's say, let's say a teaspoon of extra virgin olive oil. Nice fruity extra virgin olive oil. A little bit of salt, kosher salt. A little bit of ground fresh pepper. And I'm just going to whisk these together. I just want to whisk all the ingredients into the cheese and when we actually whip the ricotta, it'll get just a little bit lighter. So now that we have our ricotta seasoned and whipped. I'm just going to transfer this to this pastry bag here. I just took a pastry bag and put it in a little bain-marie here. Just makes it a little easier to fill. So now that we have our ricotta in our pastry bag, I'm just going to take this pastry bag out of here. and squeezed up. So now we have our ricotta ready. So I'm just going to take a little bit of extra virgin olive oil and I'm just going to drizzle it all over the bread. Nice, nice even layer of the extra virgin olive oil. It's going to make grilling this a little easier. It's going to help get those grill marks on there. So I have a preheated grill pan. I'm just going to press this piece of bread right against it. Nice piece of ciabatta bread. So we have these little shaved zucchinis here. I just shaved these on a mandolin, so we have these nice big planks of the zucchini. So I'm just going to take a few of these guys. I'm just going to take a little bit of extra virgin olive oil and season these zucchinis. We're going to add just a little bit of ground black pepper, a little bit of kosher salt, and just rub the olive oil across the top of the zucchinis. And then we can put these right in the grill pan as well. Now that we're grilling our zucchinis, we can go ahead and take a look at our bread. It's grilling nice and slowly. Grill zucchinis are grilling nicely. We'll get a couple more pieces here. We can again season these with a little bit of extra virgin olive oil and a little salt and pepper. these ready to go. So I'm going to take just a few of these cherry tomatoes here and I'm going to put them in this bowl here. I'm just going to season these with just a little bit of extra virgin olive oil, salt and pepper. Have our tomatoes ready to go. So now that our tomatoes are seasoned, we can start to take a look at our zucchinis. That we're going to start to see some nice grill marks here. Not quite yet, it's a little longer. These zucchinis really don't need too long. We really just want to get a little color on them. Just press, press against the surface of the bread so it gets nice contact with the surface of the grill pan. Get some nice grilling action here, nice grill marks. A little bit longer on these zucchinis. Just until we start to see just a little bit of golden brown on the zucchinis. They really won't need very long, especially being shaved this thin. But we just need to have these zucchinis in there for just a little bit. 
So now we can see the zucchinis are starting to get a little translucent. Just gonna flip these over. Yeah, a little bit of golden brown, just nice and tender. We do wanna be careful to avoid overcooking the zucchinis, as being this thin, they, they will cook very quickly. Take a look at our bread, we're starting to get some nice color there. And now that these guys have had a little bit of time in here, we can just pull these right out. Once they get nice and soft like this, they're ready. I really like this. It's a really nice, easy way to prepare the zucchinis. And just drop these guys right in here too. So now that we have a little bit of color on the bread, we can get a little more. Uh, we can start to plate. So just to plate this, I'm just gonna take a piece of grilled bread here. Nice, beautifully toasted grilled bread here. Just gonna put this right on the plate. And I'm gonna take a pretty generous amount of the ricotta. Ricotta kind of brings it all together, ties all the ingredients together. Nice, creamy, sweet, delicious ricotta. Nice layer of the ricotta cheese. So now that we have the ricotta on, I'm just gonna take these zucchini slices and just kind of lay them all around. I really kind of like this, the shaved, grilled shaved zucchinis. It's a real nice texture. I really like the, the flavor and the shape of the zucchinis. They really kind of lay nice and beautifully across the top here. I'm gonna take off these guys. Just that done. So we can start to put some of these tomatoes on. Lay these all over the place. A little of the flavors here, the grilled zucchini and the tomato with the ricotta. Really nice start to a nice summer meal. So we can put just one more piece of the zucchini on. Just lay this right over top. And then just one more tomato. So now that we have all of our vegetables on, I'm just gonna take just a little bit of this arugula rucola. I'm just gonna lay all these over top. Just adds a nice freshness. I really love the green here. It really works well with the tomatoes and the zucchini. Very similar, similar sort of flavors. This light Italian sort of flavor profile here with this tartine. So now that we have our tartine completed, I'm just gonna take just a little bit of this aged balsamic vinegar. Nice. Thick, delicious, sweet, tangy, aged balsamic vinegar, and just put one nice little line right here. So here we have our zucchini and ricotta tartine. I'm gonna let this red wine honey syrup cook for just another 35 to 40 minutes, just until it's nice and syrupy. We're gonna get this cleaned up, and we'll come right back to make our spaghetti al pomodoro. So to start our spaghetti al pomodoro, I'm just gonna start our pomodoro sauce here with a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. Nice generous amount of extra virgin olive oil. This is gonna be the whole, all the olive oil for the whole dish. So we do want a, a pretty generous amount here. So we're gonna start sweating these very gently, just over low heat. You don't wanna cook them too, too quickly. You wanna let them get nice and translucent without getting any color. So we can just start to cook these onions here. We can add just a little bit of kosher salt to these onions, that'll help them sweat. It'll help release some of the moisture, help keep them from getting any color on them. So now that we have our tomatoes cooking, we can go ahead and we can start on our pasta dough. So I'm gonna take about 50 grams of semolina flour, and I'm gonna take about 50 grams of double zero flour, I really like the semolina and the double zero flour mix, the half and half. Um, you don't have to use semolina or the double zero flour. You can use all purpose for this, totally fine. I just really like the texture and the mouthfeel that the semolina gives it. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna mix these two ingredients together. So now that our flours have mixed, I'm just gonna crack one egg into our pasta dough. And then I'm just gonna add just a little bit of extra virgin olive oil in here with the egg. So I'm gonna just start by breaking the egg and mixing the olive oil and the egg together. 
And then very gently and slowly we're going to start to incorporate the other flowers into this until it's become a nice homogenous ball of pasta dough. So we can just continue mixing in the flowers just until all of it is incorporated and we have a nice little ball of pasta dough almost together here. I usually like to do about 100 grams of flour per egg, which is right where we're at here. Uh, sometimes that'll change depending on how humid it is, how big your eggs are. So we can adjust the consistency just by feel. So now that we have a nice little ball of pasta dough starting to form here, we can transfer this onto the counter and take our little pasta here. So I'm just going to turn our onions down just a little bit, just let these cook nice and slowly. So now that we have our pasta dough starting to come together, uh, we're just going to start kneading. What the kneading does is it really starts to help develop the gluten, which is ultimately going to give a nice texture to the pasta. It's going to give a nice mouthfeel. It's going to have that nice chewy texture that we really like about pasta. And as, this, as we work this, if we need to add a little more flour, like I said, based on the humidity and the size of the eggs, the amount of flour that we're going to need to add is going to change based on each batch. So we can add just a little bit more flour here and continue to work this in. This beautiful yellow pasta dough. The egg gives it a nice yellow color, as does the semolina. It's beautiful yellow color. So as we continue to knead this dough, we'll see that it's going to start to develop a real sticky, sort of elastic texture which is really just what we want, a nice, smooth, smooth dough. And this is really it. We're going to want to knead this for about 10 or 15 minutes, just until we have a nice, sticky, elastic texture. We can already see that it's starting to form into a nice, nice tight little ball, getting some nice, nice gluten here. So now that our onions have started to cook down just a little bit, so now that we have our onions sweating nicely, just going to add just a little bit of fresh basil here. So I'm just going to take a small handful of fresh basil leaves. I'm just going to get these right in. So now that we're frying our basil leaves in here, this classic Italian pomodoro sauce, it's gonna, all this basil is going to give this all the olive oil a really delicious herbaceous quality. And then that herbaceous quality is going to be all throughout the sauce, which is going to be really delicious here. So we can continue cooking this for just a few moments. Just let the onions cook down just a little bit longer. We have a bunch of these beautiful San Marzano tomatoes. These are actually De Fratelli tomatoes. Um, I really love using these San Marzano tomatoes. They really have an excellent structure to them and they really create a nice body for the finished sauce. I really love the San Marzano tomatoes. So we can just start to put these big San Marzano tomatoes in here. Um, we want to have we want to have about a five to one tomato to onion ratio. We really like to have a good amount of onions because that sweetness that'll come from the onions will work really well with the acidity of the tomatoes. And just a couple more tomatoes here, and that should do it. Maybe one more. So now that we have all of our tomatoes. Mix together with our sauce. We can just stir all these to incorporate. So now that we have all of our tomatoes into the pot, we can go ahead and we can let this sauce cook for about 30 to 40 minutes, just until the sauce is nice and pulpy. And we're also going to let this dough rest for about 15 to 20 minutes, just until it's had a time to let some of that gluten relax. We'll get this cleaned up and we'll come right back and roll our pasta. So our pasta sauce has had a chance to cook for about 30 or 40 minutes and we can see that the texture has become a nice smooth homogenous sauce here. So that's ready to go. Our dough has had a chance to rest and become nice and squishy and elastic, a little sticky even. So what we're going to do is we're going to start to take our dough and we're going to start to push it through this machine here. Uh, this little pasta roller and we're going to just start by putting it through the largest setting and then very slowly we're going to uh, decrease in size until we have a nice nice thin sheet of pasta and then we can cut it into the spaghetti. So now that we have a nice piece of dough here that should be able to go to the machine, we can just start cranking. And now that we have gone, made a nice thin sheet of pasta, we can just again decrease in size and just continue to decrease in size until we have a nice big long sheet of pasta. 
decent size one more. Run it through again. We can decrease one more size here. Run it through again. So now that we have a nice big sheet of pasta, what I like to do to make this nice and consistent, I like to fold it over one time, and then we can go all the way back to the beginning and start rolling again. We'll make for a nice, nice big flat sheet of pasta. It'll be a little easier to work with. We can run this through again, and again, decrease in size, run it through again, decrease in size, through the machine again. And we're just gonna keep doing this until we have about of an eighth, an eighth of an inch in thickness. A little bit thinner here. Maybe one more pass and it should be just thin enough. Nice, beautiful sheet of pa fresh pasta. It's gonna go very well with our pomodoro sauce, a very classic Italian pasta. Some of the people probably very familiar with, but may not know how to make the pasta from scratch. It's one of my favorite pastas. I love the sweetness of the onion and the acidity of the tomato. It makes for one of, my, one of my favorite pastas. So now that we have a nice big long sheet of pasta, I'm just gonna break this down into little spaghetti length pieces. And I'm actually gonna break these down in half. It actually makes, it actually goes through the machine a little easier. Break these down in half. So now I'm going to take our spaghetti die and I'm gonna run all this fresh pasta right to our spaghetti die. So we just take these little sheets of pasta and just roll them right through the spaghetti. And we have this beautiful fresh spaghetti. So we have spaghetti, we can just continue with the rest of this until all of it's through. I really love making fresh pasta. And this is, a, this is a pretty easy one to make, especially if you have a little pasta roller like this. You can do it with a rolling pin, but it's a little labor intensive. So just a couple more pieces here and all of our spaghetti is cut. more piece. So now that we have all of our spaghetti cut, so we can just get this pasta machine out of the way. And I have just a little bit of fresh basil here. And what we're going to do is we're going to fry it in some extra virgin olive oil. This is going to spatter a little bit, but we want to just fry this at a very hot temperature so that it makes for a nice crispy basil and it'll be nice, bright, and green. So I'm just going to drop this basil leaf right into some nice hot oil. It's going to explode a little bit, but just as long as we stay back and we're careful, we can make a nice, beautiful, crispy basil leaf garnish. Just a little bit longer here. Just really only needs for about 10 seconds. Just until it's crispy. Just another few seconds, just until all the bubbles start to subside. And one nice big beautiful piece of basil right to the top of our pasta. So now that we have our pasta ready and we have our sauce ready, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take just another pan here. And we're going to take all of our pasta and we're just going to drop it into some salted boiling water. Just have about, about 10 cups of water, and I put about, uh, let's say a quarter of a cup of salt in the water. I'm gonna want a nice large volume of water. It's gonna make for a nice, nice cook, nicely cooked pasta. So this pasta is really only gonna take about two or three minutes in here. It's really not gonna take very long. We wanna serve it nice and al dente. We don't wanna overcook it. So we can take just a little bit of our pomodoro sauce and just get it right in here in this pan. It's a little easier to work with. You can see that oil that, uh, that we have from the tomato sauce. It's taking on a beautiful red color. It's going to make an excellent, excellent tomato flavor here. So now that our pasta is just about ready, we can see it's all starting to float. It's nice and tender. I'm just going to pull this pasta out. Let all the excess water drain off. We can get.
get this right in our sauce. We'll get all our pasta. So now I'm just going to stir this pasta right in the sauce. I like to let the pasta cook in the sauce for just a few moments. Let the al dente pasta just absorb just a little bit more of the fresh tomato sauce. The classic pasta that everybody loves, made from scratch. It's going to be an excellent, excellent pasta. Just a little more, a little more sauce here. So now that we have our spaghetti al pomodoro ready, we can add just a little bit of fresh extra virgin olive oil to this, and we can go to plate. So just to simply plate this, I'm just going to bring it right here in this bowl. So just want a nice, nice generous portion of the spaghetti. Just want a nice heaping mound of delicious pasta, fresh tomato sauce, fresh pasta, really an excellent Excellent pasta here, it's one of my favorites. Simple pasta that everybody loves, made from scratch. A little more pasta here. And just a little bit of this fresh sauce right over top. So now that we have the pasta on, I'm just gonna take just a little bit of this Parmesan Reggiano cheese and just grate this right over top. So once we have our Parmesan Reggiano grated onto our pasta, I'm just going to put our little fried basil leaf right on top. And then here we have our spaghetti al pomodoro. We're going to go ahead and we're going to get this cleaned up and we'll be right back to make our shabby shoe cheese. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to prepare our shabby shoe cheese now. So I'm just going to take this beautiful aged French goat cheese and I'm just going to slice it right in half and then I'm just going to take some nice big wedges here, just like three nice wedges should be good. I love this aged cheese, it's one of my favorite cheeses and I really love the flavor of the goat cheese, I really love how the sweetness comes through, I really love the texture of it as it's aged. Maybe one more. So now that we have our cheese on the plate, I'm going to take just a little bit of this fresh fennel here, and I'm just going to shave it on this mandolin. I really love the flavor of the freshly shaved fennel. It's nice, light, licorice-y. Really love the texture of it. Nice little crunch in there, a little bit of freshness to go with all this nice aged cheese. So we can just take a little tussle of this raw shaved fennel, just put a nice little pile here. Really love the fresh fennel here with this. So I have just a little bit of fennel fronds here that we can garnish this fennel with. They're just the green tops from the fennel. I just pick them into little pieces and I just put them in a little bit of ice cold water to make them nice and crisp. So we can take just these little fennel fronds and just put these all over. really love the color of the white fennel and the beautiful green fronds. It's a really nice, really nice presentation. You can take just a little bit of chopped pistachio and just put this all over. Really love this, nice textural crunch to the dish. I really like that with the cheese. And then we can take just a little bit of our red wine syrup that we made with just a little bit of Pinot Noir and some honey. I just reduced it down just until it's nice and thick and syrupy just like this. You can just put a little bit all over the plate. And then we can take just a little bit of this fresh baguette and just take just a few thin slices of the fresh baguette. Three should be nice. And we can just take these fresh baguette slices and we can just set them right on the side. So here we have our shabby shoe cheese with a little bit of shaved fennel, pistachio, and our red wine honey syrup. We're going to get cleaned up and we'll come right back to present all our dishes. We started today with our zucchini and whipped ricotta tartine that we used a little bit of fresh tomato, some arugula, and some aged